Hello, welcome to another episode of Jim's Allotment Garden. Um, today we've got um, what's been going on in the greenhouse, a tour of the, um, the plot and um, the startings of the, uh, the fence to go around the, uh, the rhubarb. So, welcome to another episode of Jim's Allotment Garden. Right then, so I'm, I'm going to whiz round a bit today just to quickly show you what's going on because uh, there's a few videos I want to show you of me doing various things that uh, um, I'm doing in the nights of this week. So um, I'm, I'm not going to spend too much time procrastinating about uh, what hasn't been going on in the allotment but I did the, uh, the border earlier on here as you can see with the lettuce and the rocket. Um, so here's a quick video of me doing that. So to prepare the uh, the border to put the uh, the lettuce, rockets, etc. All I've got here is a wheelbarrow full of well rotted chicken manure um, that was um, I started to compost this um, at the beginning of the year, so it's um, really well um, rotted down. And I'll be spreading that along uh, this border here and uh, just just forking it in basically. So now you can see the uh, the border's all forked over. Obviously, where the uh, the cucumber roots still are. Um, I've, I've left the ground sort of nine inches or so all the way around there, so it's not um, so I'm not disturbed the roots of there. So now I've got all the muck in there. I'm ready to plant the uh, the lettuce and the rocket. And as you can see, the lettuce and the rocket is just about ready to to go in. The rocket uh, most certainly is ready to go in, um, and the lettuce is uh, going in as well. So. Um, I'll just put the camera down so you can see what I'm doing, but I'll, I'll uh, just quickly explain how to put those in. Okay, so all we need now the uh, the ground is nice and is level. Here's a, um, a trowel, and all I'm going to do is um, just starting here, which is just slightly off camera. I'm planting these about uh, probably about nine inches apart, and the way to get them out the pot. Um, this is why I explained how I like these. These came from Wilco's, and they're about five for a pound. So by pushing your fingers into the bottom here, you can get the um, the lettuce out without touching the leaves at all. So now I've got the ball of root. Um, just make sure that the hole that I'm pouring it in is at the same depth as the, um, the lettuce itself. And you don't need to firm them in too, too sort of tight. So again, make a hole, make sure the ground's nice and um, loose around it. Again, push them out. So I haven't actually touched the lettuce at all. All the leaves come off and the roots um, completely intact. And then I just so I've actually put those lettuces in the ground without touching the the actual plant itself. Obviously, just the just the uh, the roots. So again, nine inches down, a little bit further down, and all I've done is just drop it in like that without touching the leaves. And then I'm just firming the ground around it. You haven't got to put it down because as I water these in in a few minutes, that will make sure that there's no air pockets around the uh, around the uh, the root ball. So that's um, that's basically what you need to make sure of that you've got no um, sort of air pockets around the roots, so the air so the roots will dry out. Now to plant the the rocket, it's exactly the same thing. So I'm going to have. A row of lettuce, uh, you'll see this a bit better in a minute when I move the angle of the camera, but I've got a row of lettuce going up the front here, and then just behind it here, um, I'm going to be putting the rocket. Now, because the rocket is more of a herb, um, I'm getting these out in exactly the same way, so you can't see this. What I'm doing is just pushing the fingers through the bottom of the pot, and then I'm getting it out in a, in a clump like that, and then I'm just basically bobbing it in the ground, making sure that... Uh, um, you know, there's no air pockets as such. Now, the the rocket I can actually afford to to plant this a little bit closer together. I mean, this can these sort of little modules can go in probably four inches apart. So 
you know, there's no no reason to beat around the bush with these. Just bob them in, and because it's a herbaceous plant, you don't need to be too sort of particular about it because these things will probably grow in a desert. To be honest with you, as soon as you've got them established. So I shall stop the video now, um, and I'll show you what it looks like in a, what it looks like in a few minutes when I've finished. So there we go. Um, so the lettuce are grown, planted in the front here. Um, then the rocket towards the back. I've put a couple of um, three um, spare lettuce at the back there, which I'll eat first. But the point I've done it this way is rocket um, and lettuce are obviously not particularly hardy plants. Now, if you think of the greenhouse, um, these lettuces are as as close to the middle of the greenhouse as I can possibly get them, and being in the border. Now, the middle of the greenhouse will be the bit that um, stays. Um, warmest if you like. Obviously the glass is um, exposed to the outside so the edges of the greenhouse will get cool first and then the, the middle parts here will stay the warmest. So the reason I put the lettuce in the middle is because that's where it's going to stay the longest, uh, uh, the warmest for the longest and then the rocket is a little bit hardier um, so I'll put that bit further out and those three lettuces up there will probably be the ones I eat first so I don't need to worry about this too much. Now if you look at the border from kind of this angle as you can see, the um, the boards that are that are on the side, so all of these boards here, um, along the top there, and then down the side, are about um, about sort of nine inches above the ground at the moment. So the lettuces and the rocket aren't going to grow above that level. So if we do have a cold snap, what I can do is put some either plastic or some um, or some glass on top of um, this this box to basically maintain the heat so it's like doubly insulated. It'll have the glass on the walls of the greenhouse and it'll also have the glass on the top. Now in even colder climates, so people who are in the um, you know sort of further north in England or um, in other countries where it gets even cooler, what you can do, which is a Victorian trick, is fetch out about a foot of the, the soil from the from the border and then put underneath the soil a a reasonably good layer, um, at least nine inches of um, um, grass from when you mow the lawn, so the you, you know the grass cuttings out, out of the lawnmower, and then put the soil back on top of that, and then put your um, lettuce and um, rocket in after you've done all of that. The reason for doing this is when um, I don't know if you've ever um, put grass cuttings on a uh, compost heap or anything like that. If you put your hand inside that compost heap after a few days or even a few hours you'll feel that the uh, the grass cuttings are getting very hot and what it is is as the microbes um, start to break down that grass uh, they give off or, or they generate a lot of heat so what you can actually do is have a heated um, a heated um, bed in your greenhouse just by putting the grass cuttings underneath the ground so if you do that it will keep the the border warm for at least sort of four to five weeks of, of you know after you've after you've put it in. Now as soon as you put the grass in and the soil and then your plants on top, as soon as you water the plants, the water is going to go through into the grass and the the uh, the decomposition process of that grass and uh, and the heat that's generated by that will will immediately start. So if you are in a cooler climate than than I am in the middle of England, um, that's another trick you can do. I do do this in the spring for the uh, the cucumbers because the cucumbers do like the ground to be warm. So what I do is when I plant the cucumbers in the spring, I always put a layer of um, grass, about six to nine inches of grass cuttings underneath them to make the ground nice and warm. And it's it, you can use exactly the same trick at this time of the year to keep the entire bed warm if you're growing, um, you know, sort of winter lettuce or rocket etc. with inside the greenhouse. <coughs> Right, the, the cucumbers are still doing really well. Um, we've still got some coming. Uh, I'm not sure if these ones are going to come to fruition, but uh, the the ones that's at the, the back here um, are still doing really well. So I think in total we've had 95 so far. So uh, 95, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So 103. Uh, 103, 104, so I think we've had 104 cucumbers this year. I'm not sure if this one here, yeah, we can say 105. Um, I think that one's going to be okay. So, assuming that these smaller ones don't 
um, don't come to uh, come to anything. Uh, we've had 105 cucumbers this year, so that's out of uh, eight plants I put in originally. So, and then also assuming that we lost um, half of those, there's only four plants left now. So if you remember, four of them damped off. So um, really, we haven't done too badly at all with the cucumbers this year. The one that was in a hammock here, um, I've taken down um, earlier on today. So um, that one's, um, sorry, that was yesterday. So that's come out now. Um, come up here, I've moved the plants over here now. Because the days aren't quite as bright, um, I've brought out the... Uh, the um, uh, I can't remember the name of them now. I'll put it on the screen. Um, these have um, come up. Um, they've, they've not died down. This one's grown a little bit, so I'm sure they're they're doing well. The um, the, the rosemary there is obviously um, rooted, so that's another rosemary um, bush to replace the one that died earlier in the year. Um, a couple of the a couple of the aloe vera plants, that one there and that one there, haven't come through, but those are the ones that just had a few roots on. But the rest of them, apart from this one here that, that the mouse had a go at, um, they seem to be okay. And I've given probably about half a dozen away of those. The um, grape vines have um, grown, this one's grown a little bit, this one's kind of stopped for this year, so uh, and the leaves have started to sort of go brown and that. So obviously, they are deciduous, so the leaves will come off. Um, those. This one has still got a bit of, I'm not sure if it's rust or or what on the uh, the stem, so if you do know um, what that is, this one here doesn't seem to be suffering from it, which is obviously next to it, but this one's got a bit of this black on there, so if you can advise me what to do with that, I'm not quite sure if, if I need to uh, spray it with something, but uh, that seems to be okay. The chickens have had by far the majority of the um, the sunflowers now. I'll uh, just notice there's one fallen under there. So uh, I've just got these drying out. So um, they've had all of the sunflowers now, apart from the ones that are in this tray here, which are drying out. And I've also got some in the house. So I that, that big yellow pot that I showed you a couple of weeks ago, I um, I've given them the chickens, and they've absolutely gone through. I've filled up their normal food containers with food, and I also put in the sunflowers seeds so uh, just to see how they got on the chickens ate all of the sunflower seeds within about two hours and they hardly touched their food that day so they obviously prefer sunflower seeds to the normal food these uh, um, um, strawberries so I've just remembered they're hydrangeas over there um, the uh, not really come too much I'm quite disappointed with these to be honest with you I don't know I don't know quite why, but uh, I'm still watering them. They're still uh, still quite damp, but uh, I don't know why these strawberries. That's why I've not put them into the ground because uh, they don't really seem to be doing much. Now, what I will do is um, give them the benefit of the doubt and bob them in um, up the back here, um, reasonably close together, just to see if anything comes of them. But uh, I'm not expecting too much. So that's the greenhouse. The only other thing to say very quickly is you can see the. The uh, the pumpkins have, have now gone completely bright orange. The the courgettes, the the hybrids between the pumpkins and the and the courgettes again have gone orange. This one's just on the turn now, but all of the others are now bright orange. And also the winter fest, if you remember, they were kind of a greeny colour. Um, they've also gone orange. So that's basically those all ripened off now. So they're ready for the end of this month for Halloween, uh, where we can carve some faces into them or whatever else. So. Uh, that's the that's the greenhouse. Outside, um, as you can see, the herbs are really coming on there, and the um, the uh, the chives here. These bloody dock leaves just keep coming. I keep pulling the leaves off these, but they just keep growing back. Um, so they're coming on really well. Uh, the carrots, I don't know, but I, I think somebody has had some of the carrots because I had some last weekend, but uh, there seems to be a few more gone. I wouldn't swear to it to be honest with you, but as you can see there's still some carrots in there to be had. Um, there's probably a couple of meals there. Not a lot happening here, um, so I'll, I'll just quickly whisk through here. The um, nasturtiums are coming through, but unfortunately the cold weather is going to kill them off shortly. Um, and that's our asparagus I showed you, uh, which is completely out of season, but that's grown 
in the last few weeks. You can really see from this side the leaves that are behind sort of the greenhouse, which are the, the vines which are outside, the, the, the roots of the vine. Uh, those leaves are really starting to go back now, so I'd imagine the ones on the inside will also go. Still plenty of raspberries, as you can see. Um, I might fix them in a minute, actually, for whilst I'm walking around. I've not done anything with this part here. Obviously, the chicken milk is still there from last week. But uh, we've had quite a lot of rain this week, so which has made the ground ideal for digging. It really is a pleasure to dig it at the minute. Uh, it almost digs itself. It, as soon as you put the spade in, it just breaks up. It's not much good with a fork at the minute because you can't get it out with the fork because it, it's that crumbly. But um, it's most certainly the best time of the year now. This in, in the next week or so is the best time to dig this ground for next year. The clocks are going to go back very shortly, so if you are able to get back from work before it goes dark, um, crack on with that because it's, it's uh, well worth doing. These nasturtions here are really starting to go over now, but I've left them in because they've still got a few flowers on it's nice to see them. We've had loads of spinach um, in the last few weeks and uh, they've, they've done really well. The kale, we haven't touched that this week, but uh, that, that'll, uh, that'll keep. We've got a little bit of white fly on this this bit down here, I don't know if you can see that from here, but uh, there's some white, white fly on the leaves which has happened in the last few weeks. Now I'm going to give these end ones here to the chickens anyway, so the chickens will eat the white fly along with the uh, the kale, but uh, uh, I don't really like spraying, I like to grow organically, so I don't really want to spray them with any insecticide to be honest with you. Um, so the chickens unfortunately may end up with all of the kale. We have had quite a few meals off, we've probably had about uh, sort of 10, 15 meals off there anyway, but uh, I may well feed all that to the chickens. The white fly don't go on the spinach of course, so they're uh, um, they're, they're perfectly um, safe to, to stay in there without being uh, sprayed or anything. So we have had loads of spinach, as I say. Uh, we've done well out of that this year, just those two rows. Um, this here I've not done anything with, uh, but again, the, uh, there's a little bit of white on the, um, the purple sprouting broccoli. Um, I have been in there and I'd look for caterpillars, but uh, there's nothing much to, to look at. I can see there's a, that broccoli there that's... Um, I don't know if you can see, uh, where are we, um, there's a little Florence there, if you call it that, I think that's what you call them, uh, but I think that's the green broccoli, so I'm not too worried about that, it's not as though it's going over yet, but um, with the white fly, sort of going back to that, the cold weather's going to kill them off, so I'm not really worried about those, to be honest with you, obviously the purple sprouting broccoli will be coming in the spring, the um, courgettes have really started to go over now, even though there is some still coming. This greyness on the leaves show that this plant's starting to die back. So, um, but I'm primarily giving these to the chickens now, to be honest with you. Sweet peas are gone over, as I say. This ground here um, has all been dug over, as you've seen in previous um, videos. But there is a bit of weed starting to come on the top. So what I might do is just go over that in the next couple of weeks. What I might do is just go over that with the uh, with the hoe, just to break up the little weeds on the top, just to start establishing themselves. Sorry if I'm talking a little bit quickly, I'm trying to rattle through so I can explain the other bits. Um, this is as is, the parsnips, the um, the beetroot and the swede are all still doing well. i um, not had any swedes yet, but uh, they're uh, perfectly good to carry on. Now, this is the next video. This is the uh, where the rhubarb is. Obviously the rhubarb's all dying off now. I'm going to replace the fence all the way around this, because as you can see this one is completely shot. Um, so what I'm going to do over the next um, few weeks or month, I'm going to build a new fence to go all the way around um, the, um, the rhubarb. Three reasons for the fence. The first, the first reason I've fenced the rhubarb in is that I'll put a load of muck on, on, on top of the, um, the rhubarb and that keeps the muck sort of on top of it so the wind doesn't blow it about or, or anything. The second reason for the, um, the fence is um, Basically, um, the rhubarb can sort of grow up and then sort of flop over onto, um, you know, sort of neighbouring rows of vegetables. So what the fence does is keep the rhubarb upright and contained within one area. Um, so that's the other reason I do it. The third reason I do it is um, I don't like to walk on top of where the rhubarb is because what you can do, if you walk on this ground, obviously... As soon as all of this has died down, you won't be able to tell it's rhubarb at all. All of this will just be like bare ground. Um, and you may be tempted to walk over it. But if you do that, even though you can't see the rhubarb, the 
the, 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 the sort of the shoots and that for next year are under the ground already starting to form. And if you walk on them, you'll damage them and you'll get considerably less rhubarb next year. So never be tempted to walk where the rhubarb is. OK, back to the tour. Um, as you can see, I've completely dug this patch here. Now here, next year, is going to go all of the um, all of the gourds. So here I'm going to have pumpkins, courgettes, um, winterfest gourds, I'm going to have birdhouse gourds, um, butternut squashes. So all of this front area here next year is going to be completely filled with plants like that. So I've dug the ground now um, to, um, to break it all up. I've not put any muck in as, as such yes I have put a bit in but not too much up that far end there because of the uh, the water logging I have put in some bark and I've also put some coffee which I showed you last week but what I'm going to be doing early in the spring I'm going to be redigging all of this over with um, some fresh chicken muck because gourds um, you know some pumpkins courgettes etc are quite greedy plants and they also love the moisture so I don't want to be coming up here every five minutes and watering so what I want to do is put loads of straw, loads of mock etc into the ground before I plant the plants next year so that the ground is very fertile and also holds the moisture really well and then obviously they'll, they'll, they'll be successful in the growing. So moving on, the um, kohlrabi is doing really well, I'm going to start eating that um, in the next couple of weeks. Um, the um, leeks are just about ready so um, I'm going to be making some leek and potato soup in the next week or so so that's quite easy to make all you do is you just chop up the, the leeks and uh, fry them off with a little bit of um, just a little bit of oil um, don't be tempted to put onion and garlic with it because it's quite strong as it is if you if you're growing your own leeks um, just fry those off for a few minutes add your potatoes in a load of boiling water Boil that down until the potatoes are soft, and then just whiz it up in the um, whiz it up with the liquidizer or whatever. And it's it's a really nice soup. It only takes about half an hour or so to make. Um, so that's uh, something I'm going to be doing. We've had quite a bit of the um, rainbow chard. I showed you in the video um, last week, but uh, they do look really nice. Uh, all I did was got the leaf. And just sort of slice it up um, like the like I do with the spinach, and uh, it's it's quite nice um, on the plate because you get all the nice sort of rainbow colours. I apologise if the sun's in the in the lens a little bit here, but um, it's reasonably late on in the in in the afternoon now, so the sun's on the horizon as such. The um, very quickly the butternut squash is coming on really well. This for some reason has got a split in here. I've noticed. Now I don't know if that's because. Um, there's been a sudden downpour of rain, even though these have been watered, but uh, that's got a little crack in it there. It, it, it won't be too much of a bother, I can cut that off and still eat that. So. But uh, there are still plenty coming on there. And the, the winter, um, if I just step over here, try not to stand on the ground. Um, the winter gourds are still coming on, so I think some of these can actually come off very soon. And you can see there, there's butternut squashes coming all over. There's two there. There's one a bit further on, and over here, which I've shown you on previous videos as well, there's plenty under here as well. It says that, I can't find them there, but uh, they are there, I can assure you. There you go, there's one there, and there's one there. Um, so they are coming. I just hope that the, uh, that the they've got enough time left in the season to actually grow to something, but uh, other than that, we're going to have loads of little tiny uh, butternut squashes. So that's the squashes. I'm trying not to put the lens too far over there, so it's... Uh, the sun's getting in the way. Um, this is the other side here. Um, the sweet peas, there's still a little bit of scent over here, um, but uh, nothing like it was earlier on in the spring. So what I will be doing is collecting some more of these seeds, even though I've got quite a few. Um, but uh, some of the colours on them are still really beautiful. You know, some of the pinks that we've got there with the uh, the fleck through, uh, they are really pretty to, to look at. Um, and the smell's nice. This is the other side of the tunnel. I really do need to get this broccoli out because it's running to seed. I'm going to end up with seed everywhere. Chickens love it when it's uh, the seeds are like that. They'll, they'll eat all of that straight off. So what I'm going to do is pull them out, um, roots and all, because what I don't like to do is compost the roots of these because of club root. 
So what I'm going to do is uh, pull all them out, string them up inside the greenhouse and uh, sorry, inside the chicken run, and leave the chickens to it. They're going to fetch all these seeds off and eat them and uh, turn them into eggs for me. So that's what's going to happen with them. Um, onto the other side of the the tunnel. Um, the uh, Raspberries, I've, as I've explained, I was going to chop the top off these, or some of them. As you can see, the wind's really been blowing through here. It's not too bad at the minute, which is why I'm doing the tour now, because the wind was quite high earlier on. Obviously, you can see we've still got a bit of wind at the moment, but um, it has been quite blustery up here. And if you leave the tops on like this, uh, there's one over here that's actually bent over, which is unfortunate. But uh, this one... Uh, this one round here, so that's um, this here is completely uh, bent over down there. So um, really, I need to uh, cut the tops off these now. Take the top sort of up to kind of here. Otherwise, they're just going to break off during the winter, which is obviously uh, undesirable. So I'm just going to walk back up here and fight my way through the raspberries. Still got plenty of strawberries coming. As you can see, there's a really nice one here. I've had my eyes on for a couple of days now and that's not far off from being picked and I'm going to eat that straight off the plant um, but there are they are coming there are some strawberries in here and obviously that's a bonus because we don't normally get them this time of year this, this is actually a um, uh, the variety, I can't remember the name of the variety but I know it's a sort of main crop type which is sort of late spring so these should um, flower and fruit sort of in um, you know sort of late May early June so that's when they're normally so the fact that we're in October almost November now um, you know you can tell that the uh, the seasons are all over the place because um, we've had such a mild year this year but uh, that's the allotment um, as it is today um, I've emptied this tub into the greenhouse where the uh, the lettuce have gone and uh, the hollyhocks are coming on strong I'm hoping that they're going to come back again next year Obviously these are all white ones, I've got some pink ones and really dark purple ones which I've uh, managed to get some seed from, but uh, I do like the hollyhocks up the back there. Um, I'm going to be bringing in um, the um, lavender plants that are here, and also these few that are here, um, there's some in that, that's up there. Um, I'm going to be putting them in the greenhouse over the next uh, few days, because I think they're probably going to be better off inside the greenhouse rather than outside. But uh, Anyway, that's the allotment as it is today. We're we're on the 18th of October today, um, so this will be the part three of October tour, and there'll be a part four in a, in about a week or so. I know chickens are supposed to be cleverer than dogs, but uh, I'm sure these chickens of mine have actually learned what the word cucumber means, because as soon as I say the word, they're here waiting for it. Making short work of it. So, I hope this episode is a bit of some use to you. Um, I know I said I was going to do the financial side of um, things in this episode, however, because it's already three quarters of an hour long, um, I'm going to be putting that in either the next one or the one after that. So um, I hope the information that I've given you in this episode has been of use to you. Uh, please do put your comments below, um, subscribe, etc. And uh, thank you for watching. Jim's Lumber Garden. <laughs>